What's going on guys, Arab here, welcome back to the Pit Lane Podcast, episode number 31 today for the Mexican Grand Prix, probably one of the funniest Grand Prix endings in a while, in a while, so you join with uh, myself, Callum and Tom, so the Mexican Grand Prix, well we had a very interesting uh, like opening lap or two, Hamilton cut the corner about 5 million miles, then there wasn't really anything to talk about until lap 70, where it all kicked off, and then we had a lot mm. of stuff to actually talk about post-race. So hopefully by now you would have seen it. It was it was live on pretty much everything, so there's no delay for it. So you've seen what's happened: Verstappen versus Vettel, and then Vettel v Ricardo, and then the seemingly Vettel v Charlie Whiting. <laughs> <laughs> what did we think of that, guys? <laughs> It was, honestly, when I was watching it, I was, like, genuinely excited just because it's been a while since we've had a really good battle like that. And the, the brilliant thing was, it was a battle that didn't end in someone in the wall. It didn't end, it ended in a penalty, but it didn't end with anything messy. It just ended in with a lot of banter, which obviously we all loved yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> but it was just nice to three, three drivers that arguably all world championship material, obviously one of them already is a world champion, just going at it and locking up into each corner, but not crashing into each other. Yeah, it was uh, the Ricardo move. Was uh, mm. it was it was still a bit debatable because Ricardo saying post race that uh, he feels Vettel deserves a penalty. So we'll see what happens with that because Vettel did move quite late in the breaking. So it was close, and that's why I think it's it's nice for us as fans. It was so that's so close, marks, yeah. and it was just great I've... to see them not crash. If there's a representation of the race, it's just this. And then yeah. right at the end, <laughs> lap <laughs> one to this. lap sixty nine basically was but nothing. Dead. Yeah, you could have missed it. I'm, I'm going to try and take off my rose tinted glasses here. That Vettel one was just. It was closer than close. <laughs> it was basically. like I mean, if you're drawing a line, it's like we're talking. You know, when you get the, you know, you get the um, what do you call it? You know, in tennis, when it's like really close to the line, and they uh, call eagle, for the replay the on the, cam, the, the eagle. Yeah. It's like we're, we're talking like yeah, it was so fine hairs, like yeah. <laughs> no, I think the thing the ironic thing was just the fact that they, that's why I think Ricardo feels so hard done by, literally because there's just been a recent rule introduction saying yeah, you can't yeah. move in the braking zone. But then again, you always have to apply it from both points of view. Vettel still did leave a car's width. Unlike Just what about, Verstappen yeah. used to do. Obviously, Verstappen, if you apply that from Japan, okay, there was maybe not so much of a gap there like is in. But they both I made the know. corner. That, that's the main they both thing. Made the they corner. both made the corner. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. Somehow. Somehow. A, lot of, a bit Somehow. of NASCAR Somehow. rubbing, a bit of, Yeah, a bit of a bump and grind on the side pod. <laughs> my, yeah. my argument, if I was like defending, this is me like defending Ferrari and Vettel here because obviously I'm a, you know, I'm a fanboy. <laughs> Hat on. Um... If Verstappen had just obeyed the rules, that wouldn't have happened. Simple as that. Yeah, well, if if he had done what Horner had yeah, told him to do on the radio, though, that, that what that, most people would have done. That move wouldn't have even wouldn't happened, have happened in, in that exactly. in that new history that would have been created from him. I uh, think that's why he was so place. frustrated, Vettel, crossing the line. Oh, of he's course, like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. If he he'd just why done so that... Pissed. He said Nothing himself. Have happened. He said it himself on the radio, like me, just literally. It was a bit. The radio was delayed, but the way it lined up yeah. with the Ricardo move was perfect. Literally, the radio stopped yeah. as Ricardo dive bomb, so it looked like Vettel stopped talking to make the like the make the uh, defensive yeah. move. But, so, hold uh, on, give us a yeah. sec. <laughs> yeah. like... Mid speech, <laughs> but it was a little bit delayed. But he, he literally was saying like, "This kid's just backing me up." You can clearly see he knows he's going to get a penalty, so he's just trying to help out his teammate here to maybe get a podium. You know what he's doing, and that was also very good. I felt like even. Before Vettel stated yeah. that, I think everyone sort of knew that was ha- what was happening there. Like Verstappen sort of knew, okay, I'm maybe about in his mind probably half half for a penalty, so I'll try and you know help the team out, back him up into into Ricardo. Maybe Ricardo can come through and get fourth, and then if I do get a penalty, then it's still a Red Bull on the podium and a, a Red Bull in fourth or fifth. Well, it's still a bit of it's like a massive corner cut gate. So if you did it in like chronological order of what wh- which corner cut happened first, yeah, obviously there was the Hamilton one, very first one, <laughs> which he just decided to outbreak himself and just go steaming into turn one, quite a big he did lock a Rosberg Russia. What was our thoughts on that? I it think was. I think I I just think it's good. I think there's nothing wrong with it. For one, if you look at the speed ca- ca- being carried into the corner, Hamilton's going in way hotter than Verstappen. He's oh yeah, narrow yeah, on the apex yeah. than Verstappen. And thirdly, lap one, cold tires, full race fuel. 
That's just but then, then again, I'm people will go like are trying to apply that to everyone. It says, oh, everyone could just cut it then because we've all got cold tires, we've all got a heavy car, and the you know what I mean like pe- people will apply that the in the same logic. For me, is really that Rosberg was a little bit further behind Hamilton on the on the right hand side as we looked it down the pit straight. Um, yeah, than Vettel but... was to Verstappen. So I feel like that's the only sort of, you know, Max was having to think about. Whereas I don't think Hamilton would have necessarily thought about defending the corner too much because Rosberg really, wasn't really anywhere near to make a move, really, in my opinion. It would have mm-hmm. been the di- it would have been Verstappen's dive bomb on, uh, I can't remember who even, even dive bombed. Who was it? It was, uh, it was Rosberg himself. Yeah, it was Rosberg himself. Yeah. It would have been like Verstappen's dive bomb on Rosberg if Rosberg had tried to make a move into turn one there on Hamilton. So I feel that's the difference there, but it's it. I just you've seen both of their onboards, haven't you? I've seen the overhead the shot of Hamilton, and Hamilton. Just looks yeah, hilarious. No, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, we saw the, I remember seeing Hamilton's onboard. If you, if you see the onboard and listen and just look at the speed, Hamilton, there is no way he's using that extra bit of tarmac to get back on. He's just running way too hot. That was Whereas what Paul Hirsch pointed out. Yeah. You, if you look at Verstappen, he actually went down the gears and it looks like he thought about staying on the tarmac, but he decided to just straight line mm. it. Is that, uh, the that's the borderline the thing. Yeah. That is the borderline thing. I'll, t- I'll take your word on that because I haven't seen the Verstappen on board. You know like what Perez did yeah, when, when he went out on Massa and he sort of just steered it back on? Yeah, just yeah, about. Just yeah, 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 he just went back on. Yeah, he just got on. Yeah, yeah, just accepted right. the fact that, hold but on, he, I'm going to lose a lot of time. And went across. Hmm. I think also Hamilton as well, though, is the fact that people are like questioning it. But and then again, the safety car kind of... New, well, that, that yeah, in the end, it didn't matter too so, much for the safety car. Um, for, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't affect the race result, really. But... but. Yeah, the Rosberg one was really even compare. less. The Rosberg then, one yeah, was just... Talk about the Rosberg one. That's oh, nothing, yeah, the Rosberg one, I didn't think was... We thought there was no issue there, either. No, the Rosberg just one was... Just because it was Verstappen that pushed him off. Verstappen hit him off. Simple as that. Yeah. I this mean, looks like we're being know. massive Verstappen haters here, by the way. No, just but I'm just... I'm, get I'm, ready for no, the no, comments. I'm sorry, we're just telling the facts. That's what happened. Even Look, though every commentator commentating it said, oh, yeah, they just made contact there. Rosberg just went to avoid what was going to be a sausage curb. Yeah, even Apex. Sky F1 Slow were up, trying yeah. really hard to try and blame Rosberg for a penalty, obviously trying to rub their fucking Hamilton hands together. <laughs> I've mean, got even a pencil. Sky knew. I've even got a Sky pencil knew. sharpener. I'm sharpening my pencil and I'm poking Verstappen like this. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. Fans, to be honest. I'm not calling BS. I'm just calling it as it is. There was contact. Verstappen went up the inside, went in too hot. Smack Rosberg. Obviously I Rosberg. Mean, I don't know. It's, it's much more deeper into two. It's more deeper into two. So. It's not as bad of a cut anyway. Honestly, but he had nowhere that, else to go. The, the, the Ros- that Rosberg incident, I, I think it, it's so not a non-issue that I don't even feel like it's even worth discussing too much. Exactly. Really. Like, literally, it's, it is well, just yeah, but a, It's just weird. I can't get over the fact that some people actually believe that Rosberg exactly. should have given that position back. Nothing Because here. if you push the driver it's, off, you're going to expect them to maintain you know, their position it, because you forced them off you, the track. It's probably going to be either anyone who likes Hamilton or Verstappen. It, you can never tell completely on Twitter sometimes with people's bios and stuff, but you can probably, I think, yeah, yeah. if you came at it from like a, just a neutral standpoint, like I am, like sort of Cal is-ish. Yeah, I'm neutral. And, and Tom position. as well. Oh, Tom's not, in, we Tom's are, not yeah. involved in, in it, like his drivers are Ferrari drivers. So, it it is literally. I don't it's feel the first like, incident where I feel like it's, like it's not even an issue. I don't think like yeah. I think we should just move on to what is probably getting back to the very end of the Grand Prix again because we talked about the Verstappen <laughs> Vettel incident. Yeah, the take the pin, yeah, like, Marco, yeah, and go right, right to the end. We're like tracking it on the on the timeline. <laughs> um, we were talking about the Ricardo Vettel one, and then it was just the the aftermath that unfolded of uh, the last final lap, lap seventy one. Of Vettel on the radio, and then post race, which was just, it was like a so proper. It was just amazing. Everyone was losing their shit on Twitter. So Vettel, right at the end, as he crosses the line, Arriva Benes trying to calm him down, and then Vettel just goes, "I've got a message for Charlie Whiting. Fuck off." Fuck off. <laughs> that that was that was probably like the best bit of team radio we've had all season. Like hey. because of the way the the fr- the way that his engineer was explaining, like, oh yeah, Charlie's looking into Charlie's and it was just like, you know what, Charlie, fuck off. Just fuck I love off. that though. It's, it's, it's good to it's see class. the drivers it's break class. away. It's I know. I, I I love seeing the drivers just break away from the PR bullshit and yes. literally just yes. say, fuck off. 
No, it's, it's basically like what Alonso's been doing all past two seasons. He said what we've all thought at some point when there's been a safety car for too long, or they go straight onto intermediates after a safety car. He just yeah, said just what everyone's Charlie. thought of Charlie Whiting yeah. over the years at some point in the, in the season. Like, oh wow, it was it just was amazing. funny though, just because <laughs> it was just that build. It's just this is like the thing about Formula One. It's just this build up of adrenaline. And eventually, the, that the plug gets pulled, and it just gets released in like the weirdest, funniest, <laughs> and most aggressive yeah, yeah. way possible. And you saw it with both Verstappen and um, and Vettel, because I, obviously, when you know, Verstappen locked his outside front going into turn one, he was like shitting himself because you could tell because then he kept jerking all around the uh, the braking mm-hmm. zone going into turn four, and he was very much on edge. You could tell. And so, like Verstappen was getting like, under pressure, so he was kind of like shitting himself. And Vettel was like, "Here we are, here we are." And it just all that build up, yeah, and was... then eventually it's just like, da da! <laughs> this is what we get for the fans. This is yeah. what we get. And then but I thought I... that was brilliant. <laughs> Go on. I'm, I'm, I'll try my best to not have rose tinted glasses, but overall, I just think Verstappen's penalty was deserved. I think EJ ripped into him a little bit, saying that's the minimum. You could have had even more. Um, I don't. I think there's any doubt about that. I, that like that. There's no doubt no, on the yeah. penalty. For, for, for me, that's um, not the out of the little two laps at the end. I feel like that's not even debatable. Like that. That that's a thing. Like you could no, see uh, how much time he gained from cutting across. The debatable one still will be that Ricardo one. I actually have a look while you while you go on about it. I'll have a look here. See if there's when, any when Ricardo first, one's always going to be a bit debatable. When I first watched it live. When I watched it live, maybe it's because I'm a Ferrari. I say I'm a fan, but I'm not like a fanatic. Like I'm still very unbiased because yeah. I don't support Vettel and I don't support Raikkonen. So let's not forget, I love like Ricardo. Like, like I, to, I love Ricardo. You like to see Ferrari do well. Yeah, exactly. And it's like I'm looking at when I first, when you see it live, I didn't think anything of it. I just think fucking hell, how did they not crash? Because somehow they didn't crash. I don't know how it was. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Tires. As a but neutral, what, I was just like, whoa. But then the message flashes up saying they're on their investigation, and it's like. And then mm-hmm. you, you watch it back and you start saying, um, um. "Well, that's the thing. Like, do you know when you look, when you watch it back, you kind of think if there was more contact, as in a driver was backwards or front wing damage or a puncture, then you might have thought that there might be some sort of penalty implied. But I think, well, obviously, as we speak, obviously, I don't know what Arab if like they've still said anything on Nothing's it. Nothing's happened it? yet. Uh, I can't say adding to. I the don't whole... think any sort of penalty needs to be implied. Yeah, there's nothing on the penalty no. quite yet. Adding to the whole, just the story of it all, Vettel has uh, said that he um, went to go see, or, or according to Sky, Vettel went to see Charlie Whiting and personally apologised for his uh, colourful language, as they put it on here. <laughs> oh, um, I said, oh, you're a fucking... <laughs> and, and, oh, no, sorry, now, I'm not joking. But, oh, no, it's... Uh, it's I mean, I think, I think it's understandable. I think even even if you're, like, the most boring, strict person in the world, I, I feel like it's understandable under adre- that much adrenaline that a race driver must have, especially at a track like Mexico where you're going so fast down the straight. <laughs> your blood's going to be pumping. You're not going to give a crap about, oh, the PR, oh, 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 this person's going to get hurt. You're just going to say whatever you I want just, to say. So. I want to take a second. <laughs> this is, like, another Sebastian Vettel appreciation moment, but... um. With the message aside, can we just appreciate the yeah, <laughs> the finger like, and then and then Verstappen came back with the Italian no. <laughs> it's just like this. It's like what? What do you want? Like what do you actually want here? But oh. I, I like that because obviously the last time we saw something like that really was w- w- I remember Mark Webber. I would have put in front of Vettel in Malaysia. Malaysia. I would have really enjoyed a Vettel Verstappen DC and Schumacher style sort of thing. <laughs> I want a bit of that. I think that. No, I don't want a bit of that. I want a bit of that. That sort of. I'm not. I'm, I'm going to leave that just because it went wrong. Right. But um, no, on, honestly, it, what what I found the funniest was the fact that you know when Vettel was on the way to the podium, he was surrounded by his foreign mechanics, and it was like he was ready to go into the boxing ring. He was being surrounded by, <laughs> by his crew, his, like, by his, his physio. Yeah, yeah, the like, baseball yeah, go on, there, Seb. Like the arena. Go on, Seb. Yeah, you the think, baseball like, stadium was like the arena. I thought they were going to end up pulling out like a boxing ring and like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause obviously, and then we all we got a lovely picture of Verstappen. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, moment he was, the moment he saw the screen. In the same room together. 
Oh, that was just brilliant. It was, was, it was brilliant. just great. And like Rosberg and, Nico, uh, Rosberg and Hamilton had no idea what was going on. Like Rosberg <laughs> yeah, was like, Rosberg was like why, are you, why are you leaving? And then there's like, he was trying to explain to him. And then Hamilton came and was like, so what's happening? Oh, oh, oh okay. Okay, well, see you later, Hamilton man. was just like, looking up to the side. Just as Hamilton, no, just as Verstappen left, Hamilton was like, 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 like you couldn't hear the volume, but it, it seemed like Hamilton was like, all right, see you around, man. Yeah, see mm-hmm. ya. <laughs> and well, then Vettel came in anyway. and strolled in. <laughs> hey, what up, lads? How you hey! doing? How's it hanging? <laughs> That was brilliant. That... that was actually brilliant. <laughs> I bet I bet the awkward thing was when Vettel walked into that room and Charlie Whiting was there. I was like, ooh. Oh, no, that's the thing, though. Charlie, Charlie talked to I... him and like, patted him on the back yeah. and like it looked like they exchanged the apology maybe then or like at, at least like half did the apology then, then yeah. a little bit afterwards. So yeah. he took it in good stride, to be honest. Um, did you two see what uh, Ricardo said in the post-race interview with Sky? No. He was saying that both Hamilton... Hamilton has uh, caught corner cut should have been a penalty. And then he also said that Verstappen's should have been a penalty, obviously, in which he got it. And he also said that Vettel did basically like a carbon copy of what Verstappen's been doing in the whole point of this new rule being implied. So right, Ricardo yeah, yeah. actually felt really hard done by. Yeah. Which is understandable. It's, it's, but it, is, it is. It is. There's a lot of fine margin, especially obviously with the Vettel one. But I think... I think just on Twitter, obviously, a lot of people can moan about this and that and the other, but it was just good to see some good proper I think racing, it was, like, flat like, like out Tom racing. Said, like Tom said, like with Eagle, I think, it was honestly, like, on the edge. Like, any further, yeah, penalty. But that was just as close as you want. I, like, think, I think what draws the line is, in a day, they still made the they corner. They both finished. They still yeah. made yeah. the corner. That, that's what I mean so about that's the, the, that's the drawing line. They made the corner. Whereas if you look Unlike at Hungary, just... whereas Reichland and Verstappen, Rock and lost bit of his front wing, so that's deemed too far. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it made the corner, damage. and no, no, like major part of the car was right. There might have been like a little tiny bit of tire tread that came off, and a little bit of the floor that was yeah. nicked when uh, mm. Ricardo was brushing up against Ferrari. But no major kind of front wing part was broken, which is quite remarkable considering that corner. I want to, I want to ask left. this open question, like not just for the podcast, just I'm curious as a whole because obviously. I want Ferrari to do well, and I'm like, I'm watching Vettel complain about the blue flags every single race, as you are, obviously. And I'm sort of thinking, just get a move on. But there were times when they showed you, I think it was the manner when Vettel was catching Verstappen, I think it was Ocon, and also the Sauber through the stadium section. But I, I'm watching, I think, it does sort of have a point, though. I also like, thought, I watched, I there, thought there, that there was a Sauber that went from, the, from where the second sector split is, you know, just before the right handle for the baseball stadium. From there, all the way onto the pit straight. All it's just literally in front of him, like not deciding to move out of the way, and yeah. then Ocon through the first three corners. It's you know like... what the problem is that it's all mm. about balancing losing time for both the guy that's being lapped and the guy that obviously is leading or in the lead pack. And the problem is, I think the best example of it was when Daniel Verstappen steamed up the inside of Rosberg and that broke himself and slid off the track. I think it was Danny Kvia or Sainz. It was one of the Toro Rosso's who got involved. That was the where one. That was he it. let both the cars through. And and then obviously Verstappen was sliding about everywhere and then he rejoined. And the Toro Rosso was on the outside and he lost so much time that the McLaren then managed to get alongside him and overtake him. And he lost so much time and it's just this massive balance but of before that gaining and losing time yeah Jensen over, Jensen slid down the inside and overtook him but before that it, Kafiat did hold up Rosberg so much that was it, what, I didn't see the Sauber one that uh, Tom was talking about but the, the Kafiat one just before Verstappen made the move like before the gap was quite you know it was like visually quite large-ish like, a substantial like about, gap, about yeah. 1.5 plus gap to, Verst- to Verstappen then you cut into where they're right behind Kafir and it's painful to see like Rosberg's literally like oh oh Verstappen's in DRS now like that's yeah. literally just because of this, the slower car yeah. it I, made I me laugh though actually that was a frustration because it's basically he's screaming out loud to say what are blue flags anymore like do drivers know what blue flags are? Didn't they? I haven't think... they tried to implement something new though, where they're trying to make the system a little bit more consistent? Is in like within a second you'll get this message, and then within like five seconds you'll get, or three seconds you'll get this message. I think, I think you can put as many about... messages on like the driver's dashboard as you yeah. want. They'll just ignore it and be like, oh, "I don't want to lose time." The problem. It's just. <laughs> It's just all about gaining and losing time. But the yeah. thing that made me laugh the most was when uh, Bono went to Hamilton. Oh, yeah, you've got an eight-car train. 
you've got to get through. What does a leader think <laughs> when you've got eight cars to get through? Basically, I hope they, they, those eight line up on the pit straight, and I can just yeah. go down like the motorway on the right hand side lane. <laughs> like that, I thought that was that, that must be that like must be shitting yourself. And obviously, we've had like. Every driver kind of handles it differently. Hamilton puts his middle finger out. <laughs> Vettel just screams at the radio. It, but the problem is, I think people are getting a little bit bored with Vettel now. It's like it's every single There is something race. every race. That is one thing that is... Uh, it's consistent. It's always it's consistently moaning. like there's a radio message here and there. But to be honest, to, to the, today's end of the race has <laughs> like kind of pushed aside any frustrations like that for me from the last few races of him on the radio because it was just brilliant it was just yeah was just he brilliant. made up for it just brilliant <laughs> i think i'm trying to think of anything else that went was that, um, like remotely exciting I mean, the FOM, only other thing i could think of you clearly wanted yeah. to show the perez agenda today literally the entire <laughs> middle part of the race was nothing but can perez overtake williams no he's being an idiot about it no can he overtake williams now no he's been, been an idiot about it can he overtake him now mm. no he's been an idiot about i it. genuinely felt so sorry for perez as much as you're kind of watching it. Yeah. Why do you keep putting your nose up here? And why do you keep like ruining Half your momentum here, here and there? Yeah. And then when it, the two times he actually managed to get it, once he went got steaming off into turn one, the other yeah. time he didn't have, he didn't break enough. Or well, it, it broke too early. So, but I know that like, that must be frustrating. But then again, if they made the DRS section just a little bit longer, we'd be complaining that the moves are too easy. So yes, I think this no. race yeah. was quite a good. Sorry, it showed who was good on the brakes. I'm reading Kravitz is reporting um, that John Todd is not happy one bit with the Vettel outburst. Him, him and the FA are looking to give out serious consequences or a serious punishment of sorts. I'm guessing it's going to be like a, fi- be a, fine. a severe fine, maybe penalty fine, points on yeah. his license, probably. Yeah, fine and penalty points. I was going to say, um, at least, just to savour this, at least Verstappen managed to get a bit of his own back and got driver of the day. Or not? <laughs> did the blo- did the uh, voting get blocked in the Netherlands? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I read the, the race. So did hey, <laughs> I-, I think. Well, to be fair, it-, it must have because otherwise Verstappen would have still. Oh, that's another today. thing on Twitter. Brilliant bit of banter from Mercedes AMG F1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they tweeted out, yeah, yeah. who should win the drive? Everyone, like at this point, everyone had started tweeting about a drive of the day, and the Merce- It's always great when the official, like you- the official one of the official counts comes in risks a little bit of PR here and just joins in on the banter uh, with all of us yeah. on Twitter because they tweeted out who should be your driver of the day and they had four votes on the Twitter poll and they're all Max Verstappen. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was good to see. But I, see I think apparently um, Sebastian's like formally and publicly apologised. And then Vettel, I'm his... reading here now, has been uh, set to see the stewards at 4pm local time regarding driving against Ricardo late in. So we'll see... How that is, unfortunately, probably one of those cases where um, it will be decided after we upload yeah. the podcast. Probably as we upload it, it will be decided Typical. because it's going to take like from now what we're recording, it's going to take us like an hour or so to upload it. I, c- so, I-, I can understand today, but it's the same reason we're debating that incident compared to the Verstappen one, which is a slam dunk, which I'm glad they did that so quick. Yeah. The Ricardo one's more grey, so they it really is. take some it time. Is, it is gray, so gray, I can understand yeah, that. Yeah. So that's absolutely cool. But um, I want to say um, this race. Overall, I think it was intriguing though to see the battles. Uh, I just sort of like getting away from the whole penalty situation because, technically speaking, Lewis, Rosberg, Vettel, and Max have all had penalties this race. If we're thinking like that, but um, thinking like it, yeah, yeah, just it's a bit of a dirty race, you could say, as a whole, because the turn one shenanigans as well. But um, sort of just looking at the race as a whole, I thought it was intriguing because I thought Vel could have actually, um, I think. It's for his downfall, the fact they're so poor on that median tyre. If Vel could have been faster on that tyre, he could have made it awkward to the point where do Mercedes come in again because Vettel did a monstrous stint on that soft yeah, tyre. Like, let's was not ma- forget, was... the soft tyre stint was like really, was really impressive. His tyres I was almost thinking about... Well, yeah, that's the thing. Eric, you pointed out spick span shape. The tyres look he... good, but I honestly thought that we'd have another Austria where it just pops. I, I, I was honestly waiting for him to have a puncture. No, but he's, pushing his them times weren't so that far. bad, though. His, his times, times were great. His, his times, times were bad. Well, thing, I think Austria. even in Austria, his times are still reasonably decent. They just that Ferrari that's on just a weird thing with the Pirelli was matching but, Merck. But I was surprised that they took the medium so much. Here is, to be honest. Um, like I mentioned it briefly, but if Vettel had just qualified a bit better, which obviously both Ferraris qualified that's exa- bad, I don't know that's what just... coverage you two are watching. But that's... I, I want to say, I don't. I thought they could have just gone for Q3 on softs. Uh, that's just me. 
Because they were faster on softs than the super softs in qualifying. Yeah. They just baffled well, me was why they insisted I, I on the slower tyre. Sky or whatever one you have in Spain. I, was, Sky, channel, yeah. I, I watched Channel 4 for this one. And that was literally what Chan, uh, Chandok said. Literally, Ferrari's pace towards the end of that stint. He literally just said, if they qualified higher, they would have been right in the fight. It would have been all so yeah, awkward for them. Uh, Mercedes, if he just so. not had the Massa problem in the race, yeah, that. and he still pulled off that monstrous stint, he was already in the frame, in my opinion, to win the race because he was four or four or so seconds ahead of Hamilton when he pit, right? And I think most of us were thinking Hamilton may or may not pit again. So obviously, if Vettel's pace would have been better on the medium, you could see once he got going, he's about fifteen seconds from Hamilton. If he just got into like a ten-second range, he might have made it. You know, to that awkward position where Mercedes have to think about either pitting or risking going to the end, sort of thing. So let's say if everybody pit because it would have it forced Ricardo to pit, didn't it? Obviously, I was, well, it, I was hoping. Pit. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, it, I was hoping it would have one by one forced them all to pit. So then Vettel could have jumped to the front of the queue, and then he could have been in for a race win on a one stop, which was deemed the better strategy. But it was it was just one of those ones where the it's Ferrari's downfall of not being good on the medium tire. They've avoided that tire all season long, and you can see today it sort of bit him in the ass because they weren't good Pirelli, on that tire. I, I feel Ferrari just once again brought way too hard tires, like just. Yeah, they always yeah. get it wrong yeah, but, at least at about five Grand Prix a season, where they just bring the wrong set like one lower down, and it's a one stop, and it's like, isn't this the entire point of why we brought you in? Because we well, didn't want no, because Bridgestone no, cause you, was one stop as as always. Doing that, Bridgestone it was, was a one freak stop weekend always. though, Araf, To be fair, because it the was Super a freak weekend. Wasn't working. It was a freak weekend because the the cars looked weird the entire weekend in terms of the amount of grip. But if we're thinking logically in terms of what they were brought in to do, which was to make more than one pit stop from the what we had with Bridgestones. And then we've had, there's just not, it's not every race, just five out of the season. Just, they just seem to get it wrong a little bit in terms of what tyres they bring. I but think, I admit, you know, yeah, no, when you say like that one. though, with Pirelli and he's going that all oh, the whole thing of they're supposed to have tyres that like degrade. The problem is, then you get des- into the desperate territory, territory of, oh, they're saving tyres all race. And that was because the, the thing is, this is it. You, what we got to remember is that final battle. All of them drivers were pushing probably flat out. The Mercedes yeah. were waltzing off into the distance because although Tom maybe said that they were going to might have considered two stop, I very much doubt it. If they pit and under the safety car, yes, I don't think because look, Nasa took his tyres long enough, Palmer took his tyres long enough, then. It was all kind of personal preference because that was just Raik- Raikkonen was just going, yeah. hold up, this is something wrong with my left rear. But, but that's my yeah, point. They, that's, they probably did get the tyres wrong. It, this weekend reminded me of either the 2015 Spanish Grand Prix or the 2016 one, where just all weekend the tyres just weren't working. They just weren't gripping into the surface. They had to yeah. keep trying to warm it up. They were being so affected. I'm not sure if it was just to do with like, the track surface or the temperatures or the fluctuating temperatures. But... Maybe next year, ultra soft, super soft, soft. Maybe it depends. But then if we're going like to have them weekend co- like this. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I thought the, I thought the tires were okay. I didn't. I, uh, I, I just didn't, didn't like the fact that Palmer went sixty. What was it? Sixty three laps on the yeah, set. Yeah, but of did mediums. you see him at the end? He was two seconds slower than a McLaren Honda. Yeah, but he just still went sixty three laps, and these guys Vettel the problem was is our... on for how many laps? Yeah, was but it? name 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 me a single person apart from Grace Wilkinson who gives a singular shit about Julian Palmer. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about Palmer. I'm using Palmer's example because Alonso yeah. and Button went long. On, lots of people went long on mediums. I just feel like it shouldn't be that long. That's literally just you know the, the same was, as having Bridgestone. Honestly, because obviously, I have you want to see this. Pre-race on the grid walk, uh, Brundle spoke to Science saying, oh, right. oh um, you're, uh, the option or the options or the qualifying tyres, the super, super softs, softs yeah. can you take them 12 laps? And he looked at him like that would be amazing if it could because he was just like, I don't think we we're going to manage 10. 10 laps in a 70-lap Grand Prix on a set of super softs, you'd think, yeah, that's decent. That's a, a right choice. But I think the problem is, Arav, there's, there's, did, there's, there was a too big of a gap between the softs and the mediums. Or the, the, the yeah, super the softs softness and the mediums. Of it. The softs. They just seem to be some sort of... They're like, and it's like and mega this might exaggerated. Go back to the track. This might entirely go back to the track. I think it was track-specific. Why I think, it was I think it was also, the ultra softs would be ridiculous. Because also, get, like, away from a mechanical standpoint, aero-wise, Mexico is very, very odd. Because it's like so high up in altitude that the air becomes so thin. That's why DRS isn't very effective against... like You know, you saw Merck yeah. cars 
and red bull and the red bull cars being okay in a straight line because the, the air is so thin so I, maybe that plays a factor into just the well, general the balance of the car. speed got broken so yeah because it's less drag that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It, that's, that's what you need to know. That's, that justifies right there. French yeah, yeah. Two Ks. Yeah. Um, I just I just wanted to finish off on the point before about the tyre situation. Like, this is what I'm saying. The Mercedes was built on medium tyres in pre-season testing, as Hamilton and Rosberg proved going so many laps on those tyres, whereas Verstappen at the end and Ricardo proved they were struggling, as was also Kimi Raikkonen. So it just goes to show, if Mercedes just... I just think on another day, I could have seen Mercedes pit because they're just so good on that tyre. Whereas Ferrari are really poor, but I just I visualised the fact that Vettel, basically, I was trying to explain it short and sweet. Vettel was in the lead for like about lap thirty five on softs, four that seconds ahead of Hamilton, yeah. and in my head I was thinking both Vettel and Hamilton had one stop left. Simple as that. And if Vettel pit first, he could have just put in a couple of good times in the medium to stay ahead by the time Hamilton pit. I, I don't really from the start that. of the Grand Prix, I thought Mercedes really? were doing the one stop. But the thing that would change it to your scenario would be just the fact that if Vettel did better like did a better work exactly the first if his stint. pace was just better if no, he got past it... massa and he just had some clean air and was able to get about a 20 second or even 18 second only gap yeah to mercedes then it could have worked but i don't think really mercedes but even the ever... pace in the medium I don't think wasn't mercedes... great thing is i don't think mercedes were ever really gonna do a two-stop I don't yeah think, that, that's the thing tom it surely if vettel had a better stint and was a lot closer then why would mercedes pit anyway no but my argument is if he'd have if the Ferrari as a home, talking about the Ferrari car here, if it was just better on the medium tyres yeah. because of their downfall this season, it could have forced Mercedes into that awkward position where they have to, like, do we risk keeping them out? Because Vettel would have got much closer if the pace was better. Buy, I see what or, you mean. I don't really buy it, though. I don't the same think, way Tom, Ricardo I don't think, I don't, pit even if he, he was better on the, the medium. They would have never have Even if he, if he was better on the mediums and, like, closing them up about, like, eight, I don't know, like, five tenths a lap, I mm. just don't think you would... I think there'll just be a point where Mercedes like, okay, we can turn up the engine now, and they'll just like. Because Mercedes pull away. were cruising all race. Like, they were yeah, but I don't think they were. This Hamilton was. I think Hamilton was. Hamilton was controlling. But not Rosberg. Rosberg was. This is being, what I'm as saying. As soon as Verstappen cruised up to the back of him, then obviously Rosberg had to start pushing. I think that's the, that's just the Mercedes the kind of uh, the Mercedes uh, makeup really. Just like they just it's they, the sandbag. They, 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 they don't just, know what they, they're at right. It's, it's like uh, si- like sipping a drink. They just you know they just sip it, sip it, and then when they really need to turn it on, they'll go full like you know. Yeah, full, but I was I'm, gonna say I'm, full I'm arguing about Rosberg <laughs> this weekend. I thought Rosberg didn't really have the pace. I just think of us. The, 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 I don't think Rosberg really pushed because he fell behind Hamilton quite a lot. He was like within four seconds at one point. I think it's just more Verstappen's tyres went because his tyres were like 10 laps older than Rosberg's and he pushed really and hard took, on those. Yeah, and then he took way too much out of yeah. his tyres. I mean, Rosberg, Rosberg was struggling was, all weekend. I wouldn't say he was to, pushing. He was on, I think Rosberg was on the limit, but he just had better tyres than Verstappen. He just kind of just pushed the throttle down and just went, right, okay, goodbye. And Obviously, I, I know my point, like away. I said, I know my point is a bit wishy-washy, like wish-washy but I'm just saying... I get what you day, mean. Like, if, if, seen... Vettel, if Ferrari, if the car itself was better on the, the slower tyre, it would have made it. It would have made everyone. it interesting. I don't know how awkward it would have been. I still uh, think. Uh, I still think even if it got question, awkward, it? Mercedes would have just stayed the course and gone. All right, Lewis, we need to really, really take care of the tires here. Lewis would have gone. Why the fuck are you telling me that? Just do it, Lewis. And then they would have just taken it to the end. Still, I think I've got the perfect way to summarize it. If Vettel's pace, like what I was hoping for, is that Vettel's pace would have been fast enough on the medium that he was going to catch Hamilton by the end of the race. Therefore, Mercedes know he's going to catch him. So, do they risk leaving him out, or do they risk pitting him? Yeah, yeah, okay, I get that. That's situation. what I'm getting like, at. Like the basically what Hamilton debated last year at, at last yeah. year's Mexican Grand Prix. Do we yeah, pit yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. try and push, and maybe catch them back up on fresh tires, or do we just go to the end here and hope that his tires ahead wear out faster than mine? Exactly that. Fair. Even in that situation, they'll be get, Ferrari will get it handed to them on the plate, and they'll still somehow fuck the strategy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. Um, well, well, just to probably round off the podcast, then uh, the points gap obviously has now come down to nineteen. I believe. I want to say, no, I want I to say nineteen. The I think it's nineteen. Um, mm. So if Rosberg wins next race in Brazil, he's world champion. I think. I think that's and how it is, is yes. a start. Like, well, I, think, I think you've heard of it. It's just that anyway. Hamilton's never won the Brazilian Grand Prix. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time. <laughs> well, maybe two races in a row where he wins a race that he hasn't won before, obviously. Yeah, Mexico but the difference is here. Mexico's only been a race for two years. Yeah. He's been racing Brazil since 2007. Yeah. I, I almost feel like we need a wet race for Brazil. Just yeah, to spice I, up I a few more. Just to yeah. stir, stir also, the pot Brazil's even. always a brilliant place. If we get a wet race, 
If we get a white race in Brazil, I know who I want to win it, and it's not one of the throw drivers. <laughs> it's a man who drives in a McLaren Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Wet, a wet race. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm wins. not bullshitting a wet, here. There's a, wet, a man I want to win. A wet, so. a wet race in Brazil is just a classic. It's just a. It, it'll be great. It'll yeah. be great. But uh, yeah, 2012 was mega. I guess that is uh, the pit lane podcast. Um, yeah, uh, enjoyable Grand Prix toward because of the end, just a, a great kind of spectacle for us to all kind of just eat popcorn over. Um, if you guys did enjoy the podcast today, then uh, leave a like. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. And around here, and do subscribe to this channel. For the podcast, uh, we try and do it as best we can weekly. Uh, we miss a few weeks here and there. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, then it's above our heads at the moment. We'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Goodbye.